Hello, YouTube. I've been a Pokemon fan for around 10 years or so. And looking back on all of the generations and looking forward to the new game on Switch, Leg Legends of Arceus, um, I figured, you know what? Why don't I throw my hat into the ring and tell you all definitively what are the best of the Pokemon starters? Now, sorry about that. This is probably around the time when people will say, uh, this is just my opinion, guys. Um, don't really take it so seriously. Um, and to that I say, well, this is my opinion, so absolutely take it seriously. And if my opinion differs from your opinion, you're just, you're just wrong. You just have the wrong opinion. If you dare speak up about it, your house will be set on fire. So yeah, leaving that as a may, I'm sure you all know how tier list works. S is the best. Uh, A plus is second best, C is average, and F is why I try anymore. But these are boring, so I'm going to change them to my own custom. F as in ass and ball cancer. These are the Pokemon that you don't even want to see on your team. These are just the most disgusting, egregious things known to man. And the fact they even went, went past the concept phase on Game Freak let alone made into the final game, makes you want to set yourself on fire. D is, um, only got you for the Pokédex and three. You only got this Pokémon because you already pretty much got 98% of all the other Pokémon in the two games. And you figured, why not? Why just, why not let's just re do a quick five-minute reset and get the last starter? C is no opinion. Things I don't really care about, like politics, or streaming, or YouTube drama. O -P -N -I -O -N. So yeah, B is different strategy. Different strategy. G, a Pokemon that you will, uh, never mind, it's Differ Strategy. Differ Strategy, these are the type of Pokemon that maybe on second playthrough you want to try out and see how good they are. A is first, first pick the cream of the crop of the Pokemon world and you just can't wait. For, 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 uh, first pick, there we go. Wait, there. <laughs> Can you cannot wait to get your hands on these and explore that get the said region? A plus is Mudkip, as in these are the best. As in these, this is Mudkip's tier. That being said, let's get on. Uh, Groki, I haven't really played much of Eighth Gem, and by I haven't really played much, I haven't played any of it. Because I don't feel like spending $300 on a Switch, $60 on the game, and $60 on the DLC expansion pack. Now, nevertheless, I would totally pick Grokey my first time. Uh, overrated, it's just a rabbit with orange ears. And uh, I wouldn't really care for much for Snobble, I'm sorry. He, he's a good wall. Actually, actually, yeah, Snobble's okay. Snobble is a good like second choice water Pokemon. Tepig is definitely a very strong case. Definitely, of all the fire fighting types that I had, this one rep pretty much represents it the most, in my opinion. I mean, look look, look at this face. It's beautiful. People say a Tepig is, uh, is ugly. And to that I say, well, you're ugly. How's that feel? Cyndaquil, definitely. Uh, first pick for Cyndaquil on this. Actually, no. That... Cyndaquil's a really cute Pokemon. Cyndaquil's a really, really cute Pokemon. I like it. And just the whole cute, uh, the whole, like, Flamesons tag, the Flamesons back are really intimidating, but it has this whole cute demeanor. I like stuff like that. I don't really care for Squirtle. I'm sorry. It's just a turtle. Um, same with Piblub, if I'm being honest. I'm sorry. These are like, I don't dislike the Kanto starters, but... Squirtle is just definitely the weakest one, in my opinion. Like, Charmander and Bulbasaur have at least have their own, like, little niche. I mean, more so Bulbasaur than Charmander, but Squirtle's just this... I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, Froakie. Definitely Froakie. 
First pick for Carlos. Um, Game Freak really pushed this one. They made it the coolest, and they made it even gave it an alternate ash form. And as a good free thinking citizen, I always do what the big company tells me to. Um, Mudkip, Mudkip's obviously the best. There's no questions asked. He has his cute yet opposing demeanor. Grounded Water, the best type combinations, only really paired with the other best Pokemon, Quagsire. And it <clears throat> it's just a really amazing Pokemon. It, it's beautiful. I love it. Like, I will get a body pillow of Mudkip. It's that much of a sight to behold. It's amazing. Totodile, definitely first pick, kind of on the same tier. It has this cute yet intimidating look to it. And Crocodile and whatever its third evolution is are also good Pokemon. They're very imposing, but Totodile really captures a whole cuteness element of it. That I think some Pokemon really should capitalize on. Snivy is an interesting case. I do like Snivy. Um, it has a serious, more posh, more sophisticated look to it. And it kind of carries that with it to Superior and even Servine. It's definitely a different angle to take a starter Pokemon, but I think it works really well for him since Snivy is more, definitely looks more refined in its curves, while Tepic and Oshawa tend to look a bit more worn. And speaking of which, Oshawa, Oshawa is definitely the best Pokemon in the Univer region. I say it's probably the best of the best Pokemon in the Univer region. It is just this, it has all the same qualities as Mudkip, unfortunately, it doesn't have that ground water type, but that's okay. It's a beast to behold. It's really cute. And the fact that it's kind of based off a of swordsman is really cool. You can definitely see that with his final evolution, Samurai. Rowlet, I haven't played Gen 8. I have it in the mail. It's coming. But a ghost grass type for a starter Pokemon sounds really freaking awesome. And out of all the bull crap that I really don't like about Gen 7, Rowlet is one of the few things that I do like. So we'll leave that there. Trico. Um, definitely. Definitely different strategy, Trico. It's probably the weakest. I'm not saying that as a bad thing. It's just... Trico definitely... It leans into that whole Gecko concept, and I think it does that really well. It's definitely... I do like Trico, don't get me wrong. It's it's just out of all the three of them, I'm definitely going to choose Mudkip, and out of all the two of them, I'm definitely going to pick Torchic. Uh, Poplio? Yeah. Pop... Eh, honestly, Poplio is not really my thing. It has a nice seal. Element, which is definitely what they're going for, and Premier is hot. Don't quote me on that. But it's just like what what what's there to see here, you know? Like all the other like Rowlet has like an edge to it because it's an owl and it's really round and it has kind of cute. This is just a seal. This has the same problem as Squirrel Bunny. It's just a blue seal. And same with Litten, only it's even more basic or bitchier because like it's just a cap. And the fact that Game Freak and Tandem and Nintendo decided to put in Cinnabon and Smash. Amidst the hundreds of other Pokemon, like a pile of sentient gears, a sentient keychain, a sentient ice cream cone, or the sentient ca sarcophagus, which is really cool, or the sentient chandelier, which is also really cool. But no, they picked the sentient cat boxer type, which just is, which is a gateway furry drug to hell. Um, Charmander is overrated, in my opinion, if I'm being honest. It, everyone likes Charmander because it evolves into Charizard, but if you actually play it in game, it is a pain in the ass to actually play it in game. The first gym is completely resistant to any of its fire attacks, and the second gym will completely destroy it. The only gym that it actually has an advantage of is Erica's gym, and even then it can paralyze you. I don't don't choose Charmander. I'm sorry, I do like Charizard as much as the next guy, but it's just not that good, at least in the main game. Um Torchic, definitely different strategy. Um the fire fighting type with also flying moves has really good base coverage, and Blaziken's just really cool. It's this fast fire typing bird. Cyndaquil is disgusting. What is this thing? Is it supposed to be a dinosaur? Why is it just a stone leaf on his head? I love Mag the Joe the third one and the Bay Leaf one, but this is just why? Like, did the leaf fall out on design? Like, what are these even little like green dot things? What are those supposed to be? Like, ew, get 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 get, get this thing away from me. Bulbasaur is great. I think it's up here with Mudkip. Um Bulbasaur has really good type coverage. Lay entries put as grass and poison, which I think is really cool. Venusaur is just as imposing mass. It's a, it's big as a semi truck. It hits like a semi truck, and it is just a really imposing force. Bulbasaur also catches some of that cuteness that Totodile Totodile has, while as you can tell that it can grow up to be something really imposing. But for right now, it's just a really cute turtle onion boy. It's amazing. Totodile definitely goes for first pick in my opinion. 
it has some of the same qualities as Charizard as a uh, uh, Bulbasaur, but you know it, it just seems more like a Bulbasaur's less successful cousin. But then again, Bul Bulbasaur is really successful, so of course this guy's going to be somewhat successful. Uh, so Taylor is a really imposing massive force, and I love the fact that it looks like it has a continent on it. It's really cool. Tortex probably the best one out of the Sinnoh Stars. Chespin. The whole line is disgusting. Quilliva, Quilliva looks like a brain tumor. It's only really saved by Chestnut, and even then, Chestnut just looks like a fighting normal type. You can't even really tell that it's a grass type if it didn't have those green streaks of highlight. Quill is most dangerous for Quilliva. Quilliva just looks disgusting, and I hate looking at it. I would hate to have this thing in my party. Don't put this thing in your party. Uh, Fendikin is normal. I don't really, really have any opinions against Fendikin. Breakston is a gateway furry, as like 70% of all Pokemon are, but Breakston is the most biggest offender of it because it looks like a 13-year-old girl, and the more I think about it, the more I feel uncomfortable. Chimchar, um, eh, I don't know. I don't really get If the fire on its tail wasn't there, I would just thought this was some other normal monkey-type Pokemon. You know, like it really had to like, okay, we need to make this a fire type. How do we make this a fire type? Well, we could just have you know, emphasize fire stuff like Fennekin does, with, like, fire coming out of its ears, or, um, like, Torchic, where it looks like... It looks like it's on fire, but it's not actually on fire. It was say, well, it's actually on fire? Okay, we'll just put fire on the monkey's ass and make it look like it's on fire. It, it, it just seems lazy on Game Freak's part. I'm sorry. Um, But, yeah, this is my tier for all of the Pokemon starters, and if you disagree with me, I will stab an ice pick in your eye. But, yeah... This is the best opinion of all the Pokemon starters. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And I and yeah, thank you all for watching my little spiel. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. All hail Mudkip.